Hey guys, so I was supposed to be available to answer any questions about Gift of Life Mayor Registry via Zoom call for Mitzvah Day this year, but unfortunately Zoom is having some glitches, so I'm just going to make a quick video on what Gift of Life Mayor Registry is, as well as how becoming a donor and also how to donate works. Um, so just to start, I usually share this presentation at um, any any time I go to present uh, what Gift of Life is to different organizations across campus, as I'm a campus ambassador at NC State University currently right now. Um, sorry about that. We're another job struggling with Zoom as well for later today. So uh, just to start, I'm just going to share my screen um, just to cover some basic facts about um, blood cancer in general as um, that's part of what this organization helps with. Um, every three minutes, a patient is diagnosed with blood cancer. Um, an important thing to know also in regards to gift of life and what stem cells and marrow really helps with is it can be more than just blood cancer. It can be any really blood disease, such as like sickle cell, things like that. So um, also something that sticks out to me here is only 2% of Americans are registered donors. Um, that's proportionally extremely low. Um, and finally, I think really another key fact here is ethnic minorities are extremely underrepresented. Um, as you can see here, at the bottom. Uh, why I think this is really important to share among the Jew Jewish community as well as the fact that stem cells and bone marrow donating these things has nothing to do with blood type. Um, there, you match with someone, it's all based on genetics. Uh, so people of Ashkenazi Jew descent, for example, it's going to be extremely hard for them to find a match because they're already a minority. And that's also assuming that all of those, like enough people within that minority are registered and there aren't. So um, that's actually how this organization got started. Um, Jay Feinberg, who is now the founder and CEO of this organization, um, was battling leukemia. He couldn't find a match uh, after thousands and thousands of people trying to find a match. Um, basically, in summary, uh, his battle to find a match, and he finally did, was it, it opened his eyes up to how many other people like him struggled to find a match because of their descent. Um, and that's how he started this organization. At first he, he had a huge impact in the Jewish community, especially the, as their minority. Um, but now we help all and any other minorities and stuff like that. So I'm rambling now. Um, but just uh, some quick facts here. So I'm a college campus ambassador for this organization at NC State. Um, and this is because 90% of donors that are called are between the ages of 18 and 25. However, you can join the registry for free, no added cost for you um, if you're under the age of 35. However, you can still join the registry if you are over 35, but you will have to pay a $60 fee to get the swab kit, and I will get to that later, processed because it is a costly um, procedure. So um, to get it processed, not costly for you to do it, it takes about 30 seconds, but um, that's mainly why um, the push for college campus ambassadors for this organization and many other mayor registries, such as um, uh, Be the Match, are important. So, um, for joining the registry, there are five main steps for doing this. Um, number one is just joining the registry. So, I'm gonna get just kind of give you guys an overview on what that looks like. So and how you guys would do that via the um, donor circle. So I'm going to the donor circle now. Here's our donor, donor circle. Um, you would click get swabbed. And then um, it's gonna ask you this. Uh, you're gonna select no, please send me a kit as with COVID-19, obviously I'm not in many other camps. You're not gonna be able to get one of these if, unless they don't send you one. Typically um, when we run 
uh, events. We have hundreds of these with us, obviously, COVID-19, that's not. So yeah, you're gonna click, please send me a kit, no cost to you about receiving the kit or anything like that. Um, and then you're gonna select one of these options. Of course, um, if you're over 35 years, they ask you to donate $60 as that is the processing fee. However, um, 35 years older or younger, or 35, um, once you're on the registry, you are on the registry until you are in your 60s. So I think it, the, it's typically around 65, 70. So um, once you pay those $60, if you are over 35, you're not paying anything else. Once you are on the registry, you are on the registry. Those $60 are only to process the swap kit, but you only do this once. So you are set once you do the swap kit. Um, and then you're going to acknowledge where you are willing to donate. I'm just gonna say I'm willing to donate any patient in need. Um, organizations such as Gift of Life covers the cost of you getting to the patient. So that is not something that you need to worry about. Then you're gonna enter your um, date of birth and then how likely you are to um, have a blood test and possible physical exam to save a life. This is because um, they will ask you to do a physical and an extra uh, just workup um, to make sure that you are the best possible match for a potential patient that you could be donating to. Um, it, there is also only a one in 1,000th chance you will even um, be a potential match for someone. And even if you are a potential match, this doesn't mean that you will be the person donating to them. This just means that there's a possibility that you could be the right match, but there are many other factors that go into being that person that, that is the best possible match for that patient in need. So. Um, once you fill out this information, you're just going to file, like, just sign your, type, type out your name, um, read um, just some key things that you should know about when you join the registry. It's nothing crazy. It's pretty much most of what I'm telling you guys. And then you're going to fill out your health history. Um, just fill it out to the best of your abilities. Um, if there's anything you're not sure about, don't worry about it, because if you are a potential match, um, Gift of Life, a representative of Gift of Life will help you to figure out if this really plays into whether or not you can be um, the best donor for that patient that you could be a good match for. And then contact information payment, and that is if, of course, you are over the age of 35 and are willing to donate the $60 for processing the swab kit. And that is all you need to do to join the registry. It's super easy. Um, the whole thing, filling that whole thing out will maybe take 15 minutes max, I'd say. Um, typically takes um, most people five to ten but that's usually because I already have these with me for people to um, join the registry with so um, once you sorry about that drop something so um, once you receive your swap kit and fill all the information online you're going to open it up there are going to be two packs of two q-tips in the little pouch um, you will use one pack for one side of your cheek, one Q-tip will be used on the top of your cheek, and one will be used on the bottom of your cheek. You're going to use each Q-tip for about 30 seconds, kind of just brush it around there like you're brushing your teeth on your cheek. Um, yep, so one up here, one down here, then you just place them directly back in the pouch. You do not need to put them um, back in the wrapper. You can throw the wrapper out, just put the Q-tip directly back into the pouch, and then you're going to do the same thing on the other side with the other two. Um, if you need any clarification on that, of course, there are directions here. It's just a little hard to see for the camera right now. So after that, um, there is a little section for you to just fill out some additional information just so that the way they can match the information you filled out online with your, of course, DNA. Um, everything is confidential. Um, so privacy is not something you should worry about with this. And if you have any questions about that, you can feel free to contact me or Gift of Life um, to get more information on how that works. So, um, and of course, Gift of Life will help with any cost of getting these back to them. They will send you a postage. So that is how to uh, swab. Um, to donate, you just click Give to My Circle. That's it, super easy. Um, I'm trying to think, let's see. So that just pretty much covers how to join the registry as well as how to give um, through our donor circle. So as I said, joining the registry, I just explained that process. 
Um, if they think you are a potential match, you will get you will be contacted by Gift of Life. Um, they typically email you first, and then they might call you if they do not hear back from you. Um, confirmatory typing. This is just a blood test to make sure that you were the best possible match. The workup, um, just a physical and stuff like that, um, and donating. So just to go back, just to explain how donation works. Um, so actually, uh, fun fact, the Mara registry, so 80% of the time when they ask you for donation, you are donating stem cells, not bone marrow. Um, this works via IV, two IVs in each, or one IV in each arm. Um, they take your blood out, goes through this big fancy machine, take the stem, they take the stem cells out, they put everything else back in. So you were fine that same day, you were out the same day. Um, yeah. Uh, the 20% of the time they will ask you to donate bone marrow, it is likely for a pediatric patient. Um, this is still an outpatient procedure. The procedure itself takes about five to 10 minutes, but they knock you out just so it's more comfortable for you. Um, and I have heard from people that have donated before, they say that they really just take an ibuprofen and Advil for the following days after that, two, three days, and then after that, they're really fine. So you'll be a little sore, you'll be a little bruised, but that's really it in terms of um, the recovery process. So um, I think that's really important to highlight because a lot of times when people hear marrow um, donation or anything like that, I think the media and TV shows and stuff like that makes it seem a lot scarier than it really is. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, if you do donate, uh, you, in the U.S., you can have the opportunity to meet the person you don donated to after a year, if, of course, both ends agree to this. Um, I have gotten to witness a donor patient meeting and a recipient meeting, and it is one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my life. So, um, it's just, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's really it. If you guys have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm more than um, happy to answer any questions about the registry as well as donation process. But yeah, that's the gist of it. Uh, thanks for listening.